Hello, my name is Brenda Almeida, one of the medical librarians here at Charlotte A. Heck Library, and I'm here to show you five time-saving copyright tips for presenters. I know it sounds strange. How does knowing about copyright save you time as a presenter? Well, one of the things that we have to do here at Charlotte A. Heck is make sure that every presentation is copyright compliant. If it isn't, we have to ask you to go back and either replace or delete the images in the presentation. It's a real pain for us, and it's a double pain for you, and that's time that you can be using on other things. So in the spirit of saving time, Let's get started. Tip number one, do not include celebrity photos, team logos, or comics. Believe me when I say this is the easiest thing that you can do to save yourself the hassle of having the nice folks at Charlotte A. Heck tell you that you can't use a particular photo and that you have to go back and replace it with something else. You're not likely to get permission to use an image of Tom Cruise or Scarlett Johansson, and unless you want to shell out a lot of money for licensing and such, it's just not worth it to try. And what about team logos? Who cares if you're a Duke fan or love the Charlotte Hornets? Well, this is more of a trademark concern than a copyright concern, but they do fall into similar territory. And it's not just team logos that's a problem. This rule goes for all corporate logos. Companies can be pretty jealous of how their brands are used, and some, like Disney, I always pick on Disney, have a history of going after people who put the mouse ears on the wrong thing. And since Disney also owns Marvel, this is where I should also remind you that putting comics in your presentations is a no-go. Please don't include Captain America or the Hulk in your presentation. Or, I suppose, Wonder Woman and Batman if you're a DC fan. But either way, don't do it. I know that using Farside Comics is a go-to for PowerPoint presentations because there always seems to be just the perfect one, but please don't do it. Ditto for Calvin and Hobbes. Please use a workaround. Tip number two. Cite every picture, table, and graph. Okay, you're probably saying to yourself, this is definitely a trick. This does not save me any time. But trust me, it will. Let me explain. Here's what happens when a nice person from Charlotte Ahick is looking over your presentation. If there's a picture that doesn't look like it's copyright compliant, that person may say, Hey, nice librarian person. Can you help me figure out if this is a picture that we can use in this presentation? And the nice librarian will probably look at that picture and try to figure out where it came from so that they can look at the website and see if there's a Creative Commons or permissions page somewhere. You'll find them often enough. It's not that strange. But if the librarian doesn't have a citation to find the picture, the advice they will give is going to be something like, assume they don't have permission to use the picture and ask them to replace it. Then the nice AHEC person will ask you, the presenter, to please replace it with something, and that'll just make you grumpy because that's more time that you lost that you could have been using on something else. So please, even if you don't include the citation under the picture itself, can you please, pretty please with sugar on top, provide us with a list of citations for your pictures. That way we know where you got them. Also, about those tables and graphs. Tip number three, make your own tables and graphs. Okay, you say, this sounds like way too much work and it's already a pain in the neck. Now you're trying to ask me to make my own tables and graphs? I'm not even that great at Excel. The thing is, the information in a table or a graph is usually just information, nothing more. The way it's presented, however, can get kind of iffy. If you think about it, people want to present their data in a visually appealing way, so they get creative with it. And that's the part that gets copyright protection. Again, a little bit of time plugging in your own numbers will save us having to ask you to take the graph out and start over again. Tip number four, start with permission. I mentioned this before, but there are lots of places out there where you can get pictures for your presentations that don't require you jumping through a lot of copyright hoops. I mentioned Pixabay, but there is also Open Clip Art, Smithsonian Open Access, or the Creative Commons search tool. Please use those instead of scouring the internet for a picture and then having us ask you to replace it with another you'll be surprised at how far a little creativity can go. If you're not sure if you have permission to use an image, go to that page's About section. Many times there will be a standard copyright disclaimer that tells you if you can or can't use their images, and if you can, it tells you what the restrictions are. Tip number five, ask us for help. If you're unsure if you can use a picture, video, or graph, please just ask us. Want some suggestions on where to find a good copyright image? Ask us. We'll be happy to help you. Send your questions to Charlotte A. Heck Library, that's Charlotte A-H-E-C Library, at charlotteahec.org. Librarians are available Monday through Friday to answer your questions, and we will get back to you as soon as we can on Monday morning if you leave a message for us over the weekend. Of course, there is more to keep in mind, but this should give you a quick overview of what it is that we look for when we scan for copyright compliance. Again, if you have any questions, please contact us through our email. Charlotte Ahek Library at charlotteahek.org. Thanks for watching, and good luck with your presentation.